Hi, this is Lance with HealthySimulation.com. Again, we're at IMSH 2013, and right now I'm standing uh, with Leiden at the uh, HealthStream booth, which is right across from the Laredal booth, and we're going to be talking about some of the products that they've got uh, for uh, kind of management and audio video systems with regards to uh, not only Laredal products, but of course your simulation program as a whole. So can you talk to us about the overarching uh, Sim Center, and from there sure. we can break down. I know we had done a little bit of an interview uh, last year or last IMSH about SimView, right. but let's start with Sim Center again. Yeah, so basically HealthStream and, and Laredal have, have uh, created a joint venture uh, called Sim Ventures, and kind of the, the product portfolio that falls underneath that is, is Sim Center. Um, and so I understand you're a little bit familiar with SimView, which is one of those components. We've got Sim Manager up now, which is basically you can kind of think of it as, as the, the glue to, to kind of keep it all together. Okay. Um, and so basically, um, in a, in a 30,000 foot view, what it's going to allow you to do is basically manage all of your resources um, uh, that, that would go into a simulation uh, event or anything like that, a simulation lab. Um, it's going to basically let you understand where everything is uh, and schedule it out in advance. Um, you can do great things like uh, request, you know, maybe a simulator, you know, next Thursday or something like that. You can manage those requests and events, you know, let's say you're not maybe the, uh, the, the uh, person who controls the lab, but maybe you're, uh, you know, someone who, who runs through scenarios, you'd be able to do that. Um, and then on the back end, you're able to, to report and kind of find out, you know, how much you're using certain simulators, certain, certain resources, or certain assets. Right, so let's just touch base real quick on, uh, uh, is this a hardware product that then sits somewhere in a server rank, or is it just an online service and fee that uh, is hosted? Uh, it's software as a service. Software. It's software as a service, so everything is, is kind of cloud-based, so it's, it's kind of nice. Uh, sometimes, you know, after you have a written scenario, people carry it around on jump drives or different things like that. This allows you to keep, you know, uh, purchase content through the Sim Store uh, or self-authored scenarios that, that maybe you've created yourself in the cloud so that you don't necessarily have to you know, carry them around on a jump drive or they're not local install on a computer. Right. And, and, and from any of your, uh, wherever your locations are, they can gain access to it because wherever it's not Wherever you log in, you sync it line. down. Okay, yeah, very you good. just sync it down just like you would kind of an iPod. And I'm uh, assuming that it's not just a one-time fee, but an annual subscription that allows for the utilization of these That's services right. with right. any of the updates that come naturally from learning how, how to improve the program. Absolutely, and since it's a web-based platform, you're going to be able to get those updates and things like that seamlessly. We, we have rollouts with you know, new developments and new updates that, that basically just get pushed down to your system. So it, it's very convenient from that standpoint. Very good. Well, let's take a quick look at sure. uh, Sim Manager. So what we've got up right now is just basically a quick look at uh, at the lab uh, or, or the lab for, for this week. And so we can just click on any, uh, you know, particular, um, you know, time here. I, I chose Tuesday at 11 and we can add a simulation event. And from here, we can uh, use existing templates or we can create a new template. So I'm just going to grab this. And I think we already have uh, an event. Um, so we have critical care nursing orientation that we've already you know, set up as, as an existing template. We can set it up as a single event. Let's say we want to do this uh, just today, or we can set it up as, as a recurring event. Uh, a lot of times, these things will be happening on a recurring basis. Um, so once we, uh, you know, basically we can say we want to start it, what was it, this Tuesday, and we want to run it, you know, for five weeks, for five occurrences. I think we got NumLock on. Got the NumLock on, go. okay. So we'll create that occurrence. And then from there, we're actually going to go in there and, and book all of, uh, all of the resources that we may need. So we can kind of see what's available. Um, maybe we'll need the, the computer lab, the debriefing room. Uh, we'll need uh, Sim Room A. Um, and and we'll, we'll just go with that. We'll update that. Is it possible in the template to create it so that it knows automatically which rooms if you want to set it from the very beginning to always be in a certain space because it's a particular pediatric scenario and only have one peds room? Absolutely. And, and so, you know, for, for some of those, you, you can't book a, a bed unless it's in that room. So from there, you could, uh, you know, book what, what, whatever simulators that, that you might need for this uh, particular scenario. Sure. Again, if we needed to change something or, or modify a pre-existing template slightly. Right. Uh, maybe we need a, uh, uh, a Sim Baby instructor app application or, or a SIM pad, whatever the case may be. Uh, we'll need a crash cart, uh, maybe an infant warmer for this scenario. Um, and then maybe any, any instructors, we could, uh, we could uh, put them onto this uh, uh, scheduled event as well. And then if there's any other, uh, so this is a quick look at what I've already uh, uh, basically scheduled for this event. Uh, we could also go in and schedule uh, simulation specialists uh, and then we can save that event. 
And so here it is right here. We just we just uh, just scheduled that event, and so on the back end, we'd be able to basically jump back in and uh, and run a report. And I see right here that we can see the room that it's in because that's always useful. Kind of, and so it's auto populated, letting anyone kind of look at this calendar know uh, that uh, what they're what they're requesting. And then there's also a public facing calendar that maybe you can put on your website, yes. you know, or something like that for people to, to dive into, and, and they can't schedule. And that's let me let me point out how sure. important that is uh, because. Uh, if you have uh, multiple faculty or uh, users from different spaces all trying to schedule the same space at the same time, uh, and they, uh, they might start overlapping or changing each other's schedules. So to have a view account, which will allow for maybe not only the, the educators, but those uh, students to know where they're supposed to be at if you want to release that information. Absolutely. More helpful to kind of have something auto-generated that is locked to editing but just for display purposes. Sure, and then, and then moving further from there, so they can take a look at the public-facing calendar and then they can request a simulation event. I see. And so this would go to whoever the, the decision maker of the lab would Great. be or the scheduler. And it's absolutely crucial, again, to try to have as much as possible uh, only one ad, uh, administrative uh, person responsible for, for being able to make those decisions because otherwise, again, you have uh, you can have crossover and then complications that are, are just end up being way too complicated. Absolutely. And so as the director of the lab, I have a few you know uh, requests already in my queue here so I can see I have a... Uh, uh, Sally Thayer, SIM director number two, you know, wants, wants an ACLS skills check. She's going to need, you know, uh, whatever she needs, uh, an ALS simulator and that kind of thing. So I could go in here and I could make, I could say, you know, approved or I could say it's in progress and this is what I'm waiting on. Okay. Uh, and that kind of thing. Oh, uh, that definitely really helps to increase the speed for uh, simulation programs that maybe they don't have uh, policies in place yet right. uh, for scheduling, or those ones that do and want to use this system in order to build that uh, schedule by sure. those individual users, as opposed to having to make that administrative assistant or admin person be responsible for going out there and trying to put right. all this together. You can have those folks that are running those scenarios right. post it first and then approve as as can be. Well, people get bombarded, whether it's people dropping by the, the Sim Labs desk or shooting them emails or leaving them voicemails, and this yeah. is just a great standardized way to do that. Great. Um, and they can see the visibility all the way down. So, hey, I'm working on it. You know, this is what I'm waiting on it and, sure. and so forth. Um, so that, that's kind of the calendar and how you would manage and, uh, and do those requests. Um, all, all of the you know uh, scenarios and things that you could purchase from the Sim Store or or self-author and put on the on the uh, Sim Manager portal as well are here. Um, so you would be able to just very easily you know jump in and maybe review some uh, you know uh, support materials, whether it be you know what you need before going into a, an exercise or, or a, sim, a simulation event. Uh, information to the student or, or whatever, whatever. And so if you were to purchase something from the SIM store, you could basically just associate it with that account and boom, it's already there, all that information. You don't have to worry about trying to copy it over or anything absolutely, like that. Absolutely, absolutely. A lot of the hard work is done for you. And then you would basically allocate it, you know, just like you would to, to maybe a, a simulator or, or, a, or an iPad if, if this was an iTunes song. Right, it, because, um, right, because uh, with some of those uh, scenario packages, there are license agreements and so mm -hmm. it would require them to be associated with certain types of or certain uh, mannequins in right. your facility. Say you had two 3Gs and you only bought a license for one, it would remain on that one that you have selected here. Absolutely, and since it's all in the cloud, you can do this from any computer you know, with access to the internet, which makes it extremely, it frees up a lot of people that you don't have to carry around or maybe you're, you're sick and you're the only one that has the jump drive with the scenario right. on it. Right, and I left it on my keys. And exactly. I'm not coming into the office. Exactly. Um, okay. But, um, and, and just like that, you can also manage your devices. Um, so in addition to, you know, you saw some of the things that we needed, like a crash card or an infant warmer, so you can really, as much good data as you put in, the good data that you're going to get right. coming out of it. And again, that's something I can't uh, stress enough, you know, the more work that you do ahead of time to pre-program these things, but yes, it does take a lot of work up front, but then once they've established, you have those templates and you can start to recreate, it becomes much easier to start tracking. Are we able to then see the utilization over time in a Absolutely. way through a reports management? Absolutely. So we, we have something set up just from you know January first of, of this month, and I think that we have basically everything selected. But you could you could dial it down into maybe a, a specific simulator if you'd like. But I think we have. And, and I'm guessing then that you could probably have uh, pieces of equipment selected within specific rooms, so Absolutely. that just the use of that room would mean that that piece of equipment is being utilized. Absolutely. So you could you could say you know this bed is being utilized for this amount of time sure. that has this simulator on it. But this is what it spits out. So wow. basically, you can see you know just in the you know, simulated 31 days of this month so far. We, we've used 
you know, ALS simulator for five hours. Uh, Back you know, in my day, exactly. <laughs> I had to do all this by hand. You know, if I really want to get that detailed, and hardly we would get down to the equipment level just because the task of performing the room uh, in of itself was is enough. But this is very helpful to be able to see, you know, what pieces of equipment are really kind of uh, key pieces of equipment and might be necessary for uh, repair or, or additional maintenance or long-term purchase plans for technology refresh cycles. Because you can see, heck, we used the. Uh, uh, this layered all simulator six hours uh, just this month alone, and, and right. as opposed to one that only gets used half, well, and, half and, an hour. And, and these these simulators are not inexpensive, you know. So senior leadership is want to going to want to find out are, are we using these valuable resources? And yes. so this is a great glimpse into to showing, you know, basically we're we're getting the return on investment because we're actually using you uh -huh. know these simulators. Or, and I'm seeing here we can export this data, so I assume then we can uh, manipulate it in future Absolutely. ways if we wanted to draw graphs or other types of things through Excel. Absolutely, we can do that yeah, there. you can export this file and, and, and manipulate it any way you want. So we can can we go back to kind of scheduling and just talk sure. real quick about you know say we have a course that's scheduled that's coming up and you know that course is uh, going to launch in about. Uh, 20 minutes and then boom, it launches. What happens uh, if you're watching Sim Manager or are you in that space and then SimView is automatically pre-programmed to know what's going on so it just automatically is on and ready to start that, that process? How does that work? So Sim SimView is, is kind of a software and a hardware where this is just kind of software as a service. I see, okay. So you would, it's a different system but they integrate together. So Absolutely. You'd either be on a different computer or you'd be in that actual computer in that lab and then you'd log on. So and then yeah, the, the SimView is, is basically, it's, it's a PC for, for each kind of setting. So maybe you have, you know, four sim rooms, maybe you'd have four sim views. Okay, so there's there's a, a PC in each one of those rooms uh -huh. that has the SimView software on it. Okay. So it's a, it's, a, it's a software and a hardware. Right, and because that's the AV recording portion, mm -hmm. which you may or may not need to purchase depending on where you're at with your simulation program. And maybe we're just adding the management portfolio on top of it, or maybe we're adding both. Sure, sure. And, and, and we want to present the whole solution because you know maybe maybe somebody doesn't need every single piece of the solution. Right. But we want to present the whole solution and then have have them consultatively figure out you know which which would be the best for me right now. Okay. And I mean, so many people are in different stages, you know, and and, and you know maybe it's a brand new simulation lab to. They've been doing it for 30 years or something like that, so their needs are going to be a lot different too. Absolutely. So these are kind of um, sections of utilization, which then kind of all come under Sim Center, and they kind of build and work with each other. Absolutely. I see. Absolutely. Okay. And, and, and right now we we have just the uh, the the kind of the physical log. Yes. Uh, but we're working to get you know because when you when you look at it on on the Sim View portion, you not only have the log, but you have up to four cameras, whether it's the patient monitor. Or, or different cameras that may be going on, all of that will eventually be able to, to be on the, uh, uh, is a part of the, the log debriefing file in Sim Manager. Sure, sure. Okay, great. Well, I really appreciate the kind of tour of Sim Manager. Sure. Anything else that you think we should kind of look at or, or, or explore? Um, you know, Sim Store, if, if that's something that, that you haven't uh, haven't taken a look at before. We've touched on it briefly, but maybe it's time for a quick update. We could, um, uh, I, I definitely know that we can we can search by different types of uh, simulators, products, and devices, Absolutely. and really kind of get specific into the, what we're looking at. And I'm assuming once we've logged on to the account, we can get uh, we purchase, and then it's boom, it's right back into their sim manager. We do have a pretty comprehensive video about kind of walking through. I, I was actually kind of gifted a uh, a kind of uh, temporary account, and oh, I, great. I, I did some some captures. That's definitely on the website if you want to learn more about that. Sure. But hey, thanks uh, for really kind of walking Absolutely. us through more of this information. So we can kind of learn yeah. more about it. And uh, where can we learn more information about Sim Center if we're interested in kind of uh, taking it to the next level? Uh, MySimCenter.com is, is a great place to start. MySimCenter.com. Okay, yep. great. Well, we appreciate it, and thank you so much Thanks. for coming.